In this video, we will explain what the Argentinian flag sign is, why it occurs, and show one technique to fix it. This video features Dr. Elliot Canner as the attending, overseeing a resident. This surgery was performed by an ophthalmology resident and is a great learning case. The Argentinian flag sign is actually a biradial capsular tear that has occurred after dyeing the anterior capsule blue. It most commonly occurs in intumescent pearly white cataracts with slight hyperhydration of the lens fibers. These hydrated lens fibers create anterior and posterior pressures within the capsule. These pressures are separated by equatorial cortex that hasn't yet liquefied. Thus, the cortex is still in contact with the capsule. During capsulotomy, when the intralenticular pressure dissipates into the chamber, the differences in pressure between the anterior and posterior capsule causes the lens to be pushed forward. This places strain on the capsule, which can cause a biradial capsular tear. There are a number of risk factors for developing a biradial capsular tear during capsulotomy. They include Trypan blue staining, diabetes or elevated blood sugar, steroid use, ultraviolet exposure, smoking, ocular diseases, ocular trauma, prior ocular surgery, procedures, genetic predisposition, and age. In brief, our patient is a 28-year-old male with a history of trauma to the eye which caused a macular hole. This led to a pars plane of vitrectomy with internal limiting membrane peel. Silicone oil was also placed in the eye and he was lost to follow up. One year after his vitrectomy, he returned to clinic complaining of a white eye. He was evaluated and scheduled for surgery to remove his intumescent pearly white cataract. Two paracentesis are made to allow access into the anterior chamber. An air bubble is placed in the anterior chamber and tripan blue stain is added to stain the anterior capsule. Knowing there was a high likelihood of increased posterior pressure because of the presence of silicone oil in the eye, a 27 gauge needle is introduced to penetrate the capsule and aspirate liquefied cortex. As shown, the differences in pressure causes the lens to push forward, which leads to a biradial capsular tear. The resident recognized that this was occurring and attempts to aspirate some of the milky cortex to no avail. This is a great example of the Argentinian flag sign. Now we will show how to correct this complication. A cystotome is used to nick the two sides of the capsule. Using Utrata forceps, the first half of the capsulorexis is made. The second half of the capsule was quite dense, and using a cystotome, the capsule was nicked again. Forceps are used to complete the other half of the capsulorexis. Using a bimanual handpiece, the surgeon only needed to use aspiration to remove the milky lens. This is likely because our patient was young and the cataract was not very dense. Using a cohesive OVD, the capsule integrity is tested. Thankfully, this tear did not continue posteriorly. Because of this, the capsule can still be used to hold an IOL. A single piece acrylic lens is placed within the capsule. The lens is placed with the haptics 90 degrees away from the capsular tear. This gives the haptics a secure footing within the capsule and allows the forces from the haptics to be as far away from the tears as possible. Using a Sinsky hook, the haptics are tucked behind the anterior capsular edge. The main wound is secured with a single interrupted 10-0 nylon stitch. The knot is buried. 
irrigation and aspiration is used to remove the OVD from the anterior chamber. All the wounds are hydrated and ensured to be watertight. Thanks for watching.